I know that doing the show, I've asked a lot of everyone. I've really, really asked for my middle name is Oliver, more please. But every time I ask for more, I can justify why. It's not more for more's sake, it's more because the show needs to be the show it is and the show demands things. I've wanted to achieve so many things and I've achieved pretty much all of it, I mean, amazingly. And everyone's been fantastic in helping us do that. I think the big thing that we've tried to do, and I hope it works, is that one of my big things, and it is with Jeremy as well, is keeping the show moving. Because there are so many different worlds which could be a series of images. Um, and what we didn't want to do was present a series of images and not be able to link them. And we've always, that the way we work is, how do we get from A to B to C? And one of the things I'm really looking forward to is, hopefully, technically, we're trying to achieve that each scene segues into the next and we arrive in the next scene as the other one's finishing. So that the evening never stops, it keeps on moving. And there's some fairly large pieces of scenery moving around that stage. Particularly in Act 2, there's quite a, you know, an epic piece. But the mechanics of the floor and how it all moves and, and, and the, the main engineering of the show, people don't actually see. They'll just see things moving, but the majority of the work is under the stage, you know, it's unseen. When it all starts to move around and things slide across and fly in and the actors are in it and there's choreography, that's really exciting for me, that's, that's what I love. And then when the lights come onto it as well, because a set isn't alive until it's lit, you know, and it could be made or broken by lighting. And again, I've worked really closely with Hugh on this about you know the model and how we want to achieve certain images and you know the way it's lit is very very important. I think it being such a famous movie, and again I know I draw references with sound and music, but it's a similar situation. And when we set out to do that, it's one of everyone says, oh, one of the most famous musicals of all time. Yes, it is, and that's why people come to see that show because they know and love it. And I think what we did with Sound and Music is people came knowing only the film. We could never put a film on stage, that's not what we so, um, What we tried to do with that is make people think that they'd seen the film, although we weren't doing that. So they, they, they felt comfortable with that. And I think with The Wizard of Oz, people again were coming on because they only know the film. And, and it's never really been a successful stage musical. It's always... There have been a couple that have worked, but it's that people have always felt that it's a film that's been put on stage and not quite as a musical. So, yeah, I, there is there is the sort of iconic image of the film hanging over here, but I think what we've tried to do is, when people come to see it, they'll feel comfortable in what they see. They won't feel alienated. But I think once they start on the journey down the yellow brick road, we can then afford to take off a few little twists and turns that aren't quite what they'd expect. But I think that's been really helpful because there are certain markers and points that in, in the film that everyone knows and references to and, and it's exactly what we've done in the, in the stage production as well.